This is my coffee bar. The place I brew coffee on every single day. I spend admittedly too much time here and today I wanted to show you what I use to make coffee, the equipment I use to do so, and even the coffees I brew on this bar. Now this is probably where I normally put the ultimate coffee bar, the best coffee bar in the world, but it probably isn't. In fact, I know it's not. Uh, but rather, this is just my coffee bar. This is the place that I've spent a lot of money, a lot of time on, and a lot of effort where all my videos are curated through testing and experimentation. Um, and also a place that family, friends, and company always seem to surround themselves by. So this video is all about showing you this, but also hopefully inspiring you to make better coffee at home. And hint, you don't need to spend thousands of dollars to do so, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Now, if this is the first time that you're stumbling upon this channel. Hi, my name is Kyle and this channel exists to help you make better coffee at home and also help with approachability and accessibility into specialty coffee. So if this is the first time you're here, smash that like button down below and, and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It would mean the world, but let's dive into this. So we're going to walk through my whole coffee bar. I'm going to show you everything that I use and at the end I'm going to talk about some upgrades and some changes that are going to be happening to this setup uh, in the very near future and I promise you, you don't want to miss that part. Is it necessary to have this much equipment to brew coffee? No. The three foundations, I've talked about this in past videos, are, are good water, a good grinder, okay? You don't need to spend thousands, but a good grinder, and, uh, and good coffee. Coffee is the essential to brew good coffee at home. I get so many questions on where did I even get the table itself? Now this is from a store called Structube, and this is in Canada. A lot of our houses is from Structube. Let's work top down, and then I'll share all the equipment that I use. Actually, let's start with the shelves themselves. I get asked all the time, where'd I get these shelves for some reason? The shelves themselves are actually made from my previous brew bar. It's actually a piece of walnut that I cut in two. I found two Amazon shelf arms, I guess is what you call them. I'll leave all the links down for this stuff down below. Uh, but yeah, I, I made the shelves. And on the top shelf is the Goat Story Gina. The reason it's up there is I don't find myself using it a ton just because I love to change up brewers and it takes a lot of space. Uh, it's definitely like the most premium dripper that I ever used. It's expensive, it's got a smart scale built in, but it's very nice. Also up there I have the Commandante C40 hand grinder and while I do love this, it's one of my favorite grinders of all time, uh, I'm not using it a ton lately because, well, we'll get to what grinders I'm using right now. I also have up there a jar for all of my third wave water packets. Huge, huge shout out to Third Wave Water, they're a sponsor of this channel, but a great product that I use both in my espresso machines and my filtered coffee. I've also got some notebooks and places to jot down notes in terms of how I'm brewing coffees. And I find myself going through stages of when I'm writing a lot of notes and when I'm not. There's no reason behind that. It's just kind of my habits and my preferences. I've also got uh, some, some coffee up there. There's a experimental geisha. And also James Hoffman's Square Mile coffee tasting kit with the Square Mile little uh, griffin. Huge shout outs. Let me know if you have one of these, if you're a part of that worldwide coffee tasting and you got one of these, let me know in the comments down below. Hoffman, come on, we need another one of those. We gotta make it happen. Let's do that. We got a whole shelf of all my coffee drippers and this shelf changes from time to time of what's on it. But right now, it's all of my favorite coffee drippers um, except for the one that I use daily, which is a plastic V60. Uh, but going across here, it starts with the Aurea. This one's the leather wrapped one. Uh, it's a very small dripper. I don't find myself using it often, but when I do want to go traveling and make small cups, it's perfect. Beside that is the Aurea V3, which is also a beautiful dripper. It's one of my favorites right now. It's fascinating. I love its fast flow. It's high in clarity, uh, punch just some acidity, it's great. Um, working across from that, we've got the Stag X from Fellow and the Origami Dripper. Both of those are much faster flowing drippers than some others. We got the Kalita Wave and the Brewista Tornado. Um, both of them, I, I don't find myself using as often. The Brewista Tornado is very similar to a V60. It's just got a very different uh, rib style. It's dual walled, so it obviously has good thermal stability. And beside that is a Hario V60. It's uh, their, their nice olive wood set. And then beside that is the Zen Dripper, which uh, is a handcrafted dripper that's got a unique round bowl shape. Pretty cool. To light it all up, I use Aperture MC lights. Now these were sent to me by Aperture, um, but they're, they're incredible little lights that I use in my studio, um, my lamp, anything to light up the studio in a small space. These lights are awesome. Uh, again, I will link these down below, but they're, they're fantastic. You know, Aperture sent them to me to help me out when the channel first started. And honestly, I've been using them almost 
every video that I've ever filmed. They're pretty great. And if you just wanna light up a space, they're battery powered, they're wireless charged. They're just nice to use, they're small. Okay, then we're gonna to work to the most interesting part of the brew bar, and that is where my espresso machine is, what grinders I'm using right now, all, all the tools I use to make espresso and coffee daily. But one of those things is actually a, a pile of magazines, and that is Standard Magazine, which is actually today's sponsor, so I wanna tell you about them real quick. Now, Standard Magazine is a fantastic resource. If you wanna dive into specialty coffee, if you want to learn more about this wonderful craft, in my opinion, there is no better resource than Stand Art Magazine. They're entrenched into this community. They love coffee as much as you and I do. And in fact, every issue of Stand Art actually comes with a coffee from around the world. Right now, I'm actually reading a fantastic article uh, about Uganda, talking about the origin of coffee in this country, talking about Robusta, Arabica, and, and it's resources like this that you just can't find anywhere else. If you want to check out Stand Art, highly recommend. They're, they're honestly a go-to read for me and I know so many coffee professionals like Scott Rail and so many others. If you want to check them out, I got you covered. Use the link at the top of the description uh, or go to standardmag.com forward slash Kyle and you can get free international shipping and you'll get those coffees with uh, your monthly subscription. Also, look at these amazing, everything's colored. And this month they even had a whole section of glossy prints of cafes around the world and uh, the, the traffic that they're seeing and kind of life back to normal. Okay, so let's start from left to right, and on the left-hand side are those Stan Art magazines. Uh, but beside that is my fellow stag, EKG. Uh, mine is white, and I added the walnut handle. Now, this isn't able to be purchased from fellow, from what I understand, so I bought it afterwards from their website. You can buy the handles in either like maple or uh, walnut, and I installed them myself. It's pretty easy, I think it looks pretty good. Now, beside that is my pride and joy, and that is the Lily Bianca. Now you guys know, if you've been following this channel, I love this espresso machine. For me, I currently still believe it's one of the best values for the buck. You know, you have flow control, you have complete uh, smart control with uh, adjustment for both the brew boiler and steam boiler as most machines do. Um, but just the ability to do so much adjustment on a machine at this price is unseen, it's compact for the size, it's, it's high value, it's build quality is great, it looks good, it's got walnut pieces. I could go on and on about the Bianca, you guys know I love it. Uh, on top of that, right now I have a few different mugs that I'm using. Right now I'm using the Kruv Imagine glasses, uh, they're beautiful, uh, and also the Kruv Propel for espresso. They're both dual walled glasses that are uh, from a Canadian company in Kruv. If you didn't know, I'm Canadian too. And so, supporting up the homies. And so, Kruv is doing some great stuff. They're my favorite espresso cup, one of my favorite milk cups for sure. But I've also got some really nice ceramics. And, and these are kind of like, this is like a newer brand. Uh, it's Okiro. And I really like the look of these. They're a little expensive, but they're dual wall ceramics. So not only are they gonna be um, durable, uh, but they're gonna keep your drinks warm. Wanted to be a little original. I, I see everybody using the same stuff. So Okiro's, they're great. And like I already mentioned, I'm using third wave water, their espresso formula in this machine. It's not plumbed in, um, but I will talk about that in just a second. And then on the right hand side of the Bianca, you can see it right here. That's the Weber Workshop key. Now I've had the Weber Workshop key for a month now, and I've got so many thoughts that I wanna share. I, I'm deep into the review. It, it should be soon. Let me know if you're interested in watching that. The Weber Workshop key is a 83 millimeter conical burr grinder. And for me, uh, before this, I had the Niche Zero. You know, Niche Zero is a, a very popular grinder. So many people love it. I love it too. And for me, this was kind of that next step up. I, I've been saving for a while. I love this craft. For me, this is not just a hobby, but it's a passion, and so I wanted to take the next step. So I bought this back in June of 2021. 20, uh, I was one of their first backers, one of the first ones to buy, pay for shipping, so I was one of the first to get it. And so I, I'm pretty excited to share my thoughts with you. Uh, I've got a lot of them. It's got some pros and definitely some cons too. Also, if you have any questions about any of these things, let me know down below, and uh, I'll try to respond to every comment that I can. Beside this is the Lagome P64, and this is actually brand new to my bar as of last week. I know what you're thinking, Kyle, a key and a Lagone P64? I know, it's it's a lot, it's super excessive. Nobody needs this, okay, unless, unless you're me, I, I don't know, it's it's a lot. And, and the reason for this is actually intentional is because I'm working on a few videos uh, for you guys, and, and one of those is a flat versus conical. What do you get for the money? Uh, RPM adjustment, how does that really affect coffee and the flavor? I'm diving into the experimentation of that. In fact, I'm working on a grinder showdown for the ultimate single dosing grinder, so stay tuned for that. And so I'm on the deep end of, of exploration and, and coffee and, and what it can be, um, but I also have a YouTube channel, and. 
I, I teach people and I educate people in this craft. So for me, it's different. You don't need this stuff. Maybe you want it. Maybe you like this stuff. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Now, beside the Legome P64 is the Legome Mini. And oh, guys, this might be my favorite grinder of, of 21. Um, this is just a fantastic coffee grinder. It, it's so small and, and it's fairly affordable for what it delivers. Now, there have been a lot of people asking me, Kyle can use this for espresso because there are some other creators. I know Lance came out saying that his stalls and, and I actually reached out to Lance and, and Option O to figure out what was going on because I've never had issues with mine brewing espresso. And it seems there's a small minority, like 2% of the units who actually uh, get stalled, uh, the motor stalls, when trying to brew um, espresso. And they're working on it and they're gonna fix it. So that's a short term problem. Uh, they have a long term solution. Uh, but right now I'm using that one for filter coffee because it does a pretty good job. And then I have the uh, P64 and key for espresso right now. I'm kind of comparing a flat versus conical. I know, pretty crazy. Beside this, I have the ECM knockbox. This is their drawer style. I used to put grinders on top of it, but I find it's just nice where it is right now. It's compact, it's stainless steel. I've had this for years. Uh, it's lasted a really long time and it does a really good job. And on top of this, I actually have my new favorite way to uh, store coffee. Uh, before I had the fellow Atmos, I have a ton of them, like a ton of them, um, but they were always inconvenient. The, the screwing motion of the fellow Atmos was never like a pleasant experience for me. I'm not gonna talk about that, but I love this. This is the Airscape, and they've been around longer than the fellow Atmos. Highly underrated, in my opinion. Uh, they're great. Okay, this one is a stainless steel model. You can get them in all these different colors. And why I love them is because uh, it compresses the air right down to the actual beans themselves. Uh, it has like an insert that pushes down and locks. But what I really love is it's easy to access coffee like very easy and you don't have to twist it. It doesn't require any muscle. You just kind of open and close it. On front of this is the uh, WDT tool from Swerks Design. Now this is new to me. In fact, um, right now I'm actually changing the needles. It comes with 0.25 millimeter needles. I find they're a little too small. I was talking to another coffee professional about this and they agreed. Um, I, I prefer like the 0.3 millimeter needles. So I'm going to be adjusting that. So right now I'm actually using like a 3D printed one that I found uh, on Etsy and I'll link that one down below. Um, but WDT tools are definitely great. They, they help with distribution. They help those coffee grounds get settled and avoid channeling for even flow of coffee. Beside that, I have my filter organizer from FDM Optical Blitz. And this is a 3D printed tool from an Etsy seller. Great tool, highly recommend if you wanna organize your coffee filters. We all know paper filters are just, they're messy. Where do you, what do you do with them, right? What, what, do you, what do you do with them? This kind of helps with that. It's necessary, no. You could probably just use a basket but it's nice. And on front of that, I just have a normal tamp mat. It's actually from Breville and I have the Elite Tamper actually on it. I find it really great. It's 58.5 millimeters, I believe. And it works well. You know, it tamps coffee well, it leaves very little space. I also have the Normcore uh, two-in-one distributor and tamper. My wife likes to use this one. She likes the distributor over WDT uh, just for ease of use. And then also the tamper, I can adjust it so that she doesn't have to worry about how hard she's pressing. It just kind of presses the same every single time. Just makes it a little easier. And when it comes to milk jugs, I, I always have different milk jugs on the bar depending on uh, which one's dirty. Uh, but I use the slow pour supply uh, milk jugs. And then right now I have this matte black one from Sub Subminimal. For me, I'm not a huge latte art guy. Just, just being real with you. And then, I know what you wanna know. What's in those drawers? On the right one, there are two shelves. And in those shelves on the top is just, it's a mess. You'll get a, a quick, here's a quick peek. That's, that's all you're gonna see because it's a mess. It's kind of the junk drawer of my coffee bar. It's tools and Allen keys and stuff that I don't use all that often, but I need to know where it is. It's all, I need to organize it, okay? I, I should have organized it for this video. That would have been a good motivation. I didn't do it. And then under that one is a cup tray. And this is where I find my excess cups, uh, any servers that I need, anything like that. Any of that is down there, glasses, that's that. And under that, I just have storage. You know, I've got some uh, crafts down there. I've got some servers. Uh, I've got extra tools that I need. I've got my coffees down there and, and right now. So this one right here, I just received from Onyx and uh, this is from one of my favorite producers. This is uh, Vulcan Azul and Aleo from, from the Vulcan Azul farm in Costa Rica. One of the best producers out there that I know. So great, high quality, uh, fantastic stuff. One of the best and this is an SL28 from Costa Rica. Pretty cool. I've got this coffee from, I always pronounce them wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Pista. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but this is Santa Santo Domingo. Um, and this one is a Tipica from Mexico. 
And then one of my favorite roasters is Monogram, and this one is uh, the espresso I'm brewing right now, and this is Destagolo, which is a washed Ethiopian. It's floral, it's, it's bright, it's uh, the live, it's just a nice coffee. Um, this one has, has tasting notes of Earl Grey, peach, and cherry. You know, very typical washed Ethiopian, bright tea-like. And I know what you're thinking, what's on the other side of this brew bar? Like, what's on the other side? What's, you've never seen that one before. That space is currently under construction because I'm replacing the Bianca. No, God, please, no, no, no! And uh, there's something new coming. It's been in the works for actually a few months now, and I'm really excited to talk about what it will be, but not in this video. Uh, but what's happening down there is I'm actually gonna be plumbing in my future espresso machine, sort of. I'm gonna be using like a flow jet system or, or some kind of pump. It's all gonna go on that left-hand side. That's under construction right now more on that to come. But I'm really excited not to have to fill up my water tank all the time. Bit, is that pretentious? Is that, is that? I hope that's, I hope that's not. And then the machine that I'm working on right now is, is customized. It's, it's actually in the shop right now getting painted uh, to match the brew bar. Um, and I think it'll just allow this channel and, and, and me to explore um, more content around espresso, espresso experimentation, and just expand my understanding of the craft of espresso. So I'm really excited to do that. So what happens to the other stuff? Like what happens, where, where's my niche? A lot of that stuff I give away. Right now I have a few things down in the studio. The niche hasn't gone anywhere, um, don't worry. I give that away to you guys, uh, Patreon supporters. Um, they give me a budget to be able to support this channel uh, and also make videos possible. And so I just give back all that stuff to them. Um, being a Patreon supporter also gives you the Discord access and other things like that. So if you're interested in that, but you don't have to be, but if you are, it's in the description down below. If you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor. Click that like button down below. It's free. It's an easy way to support this channel. It would mean the world to me. I love you guys all. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.